that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Appalachian Mountains. And this, this is West Virginia. What's up guys? It's Good Luck Brian and we're back for another adventure today. Well right now I'm at the Maryland house here, just outside of Baltimore, Maryland. And today I'm with Deanna and we are driving to Davis, West Virginia. The car is packed, we're ready to go. We're meeting up with some of Deanna's friends. We're gonna go hiking, tons of, tons of outdoor activities, different things, but we're about uh, four hours away right now. It is 2 p.m. It is Thursday, April 8th. And we're both really excited. It's uh, Deanna's friend Lana's birthday, and we're heading down. So hopefully this will be another good adventure for you guys. So we're making our way to Davis, West Virginia. We're about 12 miles out, and these wind turbines are definitely an efficient way to generate energy. I'm pretty sure they generate electric. Uh, most people know West Virginia for its coal mining. So effectively, this is what has taken over coal mining in this region of West Virginia. All right, so we arrived in Davis, West Virginia. Kind of looks like an old little western outpost town. It's pretty cool. Give you guys just kind of a nice little view of this place. Um, National Bank of Davis. It's pretty cool. Um, oh, this place looks good. Stumptown Ales. Check out that. And that's pretty much it. That's Davis. It's a one horse kind of town. But uh, it's also a one meal kind of town. That's all I'm looking to do here is get a meal. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the beep. We will return your call. So um, another unsuccessful run here for a restaurant. We are in Thomas, West Virginia. That is the purple fiddle down there. We walk in there and I ask the guy, uh, you know, you open, no one's in there. He says, no, just shut off, just shut off the grill. And I go, well, is there anything else around here? And he goes, yeah, I think there's a restaurant down the street. And I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I'm getting very uh, angry right now. There's like 12 stores on the storefront here in Thomas, West Virginia. So for you to not know there's a restaurant down the street, it's pretty ironic. Um, we're just really hungry. We think we're gonna do takeout pizza at this point because this Cannon barbecue place doesn't seem to be open either. Um, Beyond that, it's kind of a cute little strip right here in Thomas, West Virginia. I can't completely talk smack about everything here, but uh, not, not a great restaurant scene. Not a great restaurant scene so far in West Virginia. Despite my frustration, I was soon to find that Davis, West Virginia does have a nice restaurant scene. A small town of roughly 600 people, its population fluctuates all year round due to its prime location for outdoor enthusiasts of all ages in the northern part of Cannon Valley, West Virginia. At an elevation of roughly 3,100 feet, Davis has the highest elevation of any West Virginia town. The town is partially surrounded by the Monongahela National Forest, including scenic black waterfalls, which we'll explore in this clip. Dude, it got cold out of nowhere. I like yeah. it. Temperature's dropping. Oh, it's, yeah, it's Temperature's dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Paranormal activity spiking. I'm trying to Bring get out like you. the little meter thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, Bring out the EMF. Is this Chernobyl or West Virginia? Did you guys actually <laughs> watch like Ghost Hunters uh, back yeah. in the day or something? Yeah. And they'd always feel like it got colder and then it like zooms it on their face. We've came across an ancient relationship, 1493. Is that the year that uh, Columbus? One year after. One year after. Bruh. That's spooky. Columbus discovered West Virginia. <laughs> he thought it was here. He thought the fountain of youth was here. Unless we're actually like hiking down in the Caribbean right now. I mean, this is like some weird... It's like an episode of the Twilight Zone. Yeah. You enter a forest in West Virginia and you end up in Barbados. I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, ten. <laughs> There's a single father of ten who's tough <laughs> to raise each. I left a few on the curbside. 
Yeah. The church. <laughs> I don't regret it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we must call the weak. <laughs> call the herd. Dinner. <laughs> This is the bear den. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's like a caveman. Um, oh, bear, where are you? That thing's gonna fall on my head and kill me. Yeah. That is a cool little uh, rain shelter, though. Like, back in pioneer days. Back in the pioneer days. This is where Daniel Boone. Holy <laughs> 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 oh, You got a scooter? Okay. Uh, cool uh, Winds down. Be careful. This is so pretty. Yeah, let's get a picture together. Here we are! <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so after a long day at Blackwater Falls State Park, we're back at the place. I'm drinking a little bit. Had a couple of mimosas, um, sangria, a really good little uh, shish kebab. I mean, we're, we're having a good time here. So I'm gonna bring you upstairs and um, we're celebrating Alana's 24th birthday. So uh, let's get some footage of that. You guys can check out the crowd, check out the scene. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Once again, it's a little pool table room here. It's actually pretty cool. I've been playing some pool since I've been here. What's up, subscribers? <laughs> Hello, dude. What's going on? Hello. Is she on? Hello. No, I thought it was the champagne. You're the star of the show yeah, for this episode. You know, I'm okay with this. Yeah, that's said. You're okay with this? Pinky's out with- What about your kids who are left on the curbside? You know what? The kids like, you will figure their lives dinner. out, and I'm okay with that. Like. <laughs> I'm okay, like, divulging myself a personal risk because I'm all in crypto. You know, it's, that's what it is. <laughs> what do you think about the Buy dip? the <laughs> dip. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lushka. Happy birthday to you. Failed. <laughs> Would you eat this cake in West Virginia? My coronary. Would you eat this cake in West Virginia? With the jacket, what is happening? Mitchell, Mitchell. Well, I am getting a little bit warm. Maybe I should take the jacket off. Okay. There is that. Mitchell, take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Will I get at least five? Subscribers on my OnlyFans if I take it off. <laughs> oh my god, you have to subscribe to see that content. <laughs> you get it for free though. <laughs> the next day, we matched up blue versus red in the Lana Olympic Games commemorating Lana's birthday. The games were split up into three challenges. The first being both teams were blindfolded. With one nominated captain per team, the goal okay, was to return going, and pop forward, all forward, balloons forward, forward, before forward, the other forward. team. Keep going, keep going, you're by yourself. Keep right, going, right. keep going, keep going. Keep going, now lean, lean down, down. Grab one, come back, come back. Come back, Lana. Come back, careful collision, keep coming. Yes, that's right. Emily, you're, you're, that is not allowed. Okay, turn around, turn around, return. All right, swipe it out of Brian's Return, no, no, return. Bring me my baby. Okay. The second game was a slingshot shootout. The order of the shootout to be determined by a race to the slingshot. Once the slingshot is retrieved by either team, the game will proceed in that order. Jesus! I 
And the funny thing is, that has no real bearing on this game, because... Because we just take turns anyway. It's all for the content. It determined who went first. We should have recorded that also. I did. I'm on Diana. Are we in some sort of... Uh, did you already shoot? No, you're after Diana. I do. Did you shoot? No. Just anyone, anyone. Yeah, Pull that card. Oh, oh, you shot already? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh that was a good shot. Good <laughs> Someone's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> shoot a bird. Oh my god. <laughs> what was that? Where did that come from? Yeah, yeah. That was... <laughs> oh my god. Wait, you haven't shot yet, right? No, I haven't shot yet. Alright, any of them? Yeah, whatever. I'm not... Just hit... Uh, aim for the balloon on the chair. You can kill it. Oh. The third and final game was to first untie a large knot on the deck. Following the knot being untied, each team would proceed in slotting a puzzle to depict a flying squirrel. The catch is that each team member had to rotate after 10 seconds and proceed from where the last person left off. Oh my god! Go, 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 go! Loosen that bitch up! Go, go, go. We got yeah! Okay, I'll start. Okay. Switch. Switch. Okay. So just flip a tile. Well, well, I flipped the one that was like, like zero. Oh, you yeah. flipped it. It's just like. <sighs> what the hell? I didn't do anything. I literally didn't move. I didn't move one. <laughs> At this point, I'm just better off not touching it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, that that might have been the strategy. Just like, like just have one person just keeping touch of, like track of what they're doing. It's definitely done now. <laughs> I will scream. <laughs> All right, this is a win. <laughs> I like, like I must have. Following a dominant three nothing blue team victory, we made our way over to Healthberry Farm, where we met up with Ben McKean. Ben owns and operates Honey River Meadery, an over eighty acre farm in neighboring Dry Fork, West Virginia. Honey River Meadery took home the gold medal in the National Meat Crafters competition for their Melamo entry, the Honey River Pineman. All of McKean's honeys are raw and come to you straight from the hive, without pasteurization or processing. Honey River Meads are aged for over two years so they can be bottled without sulfates. If you ever find yourself in Cannon Valley, I highly recommend making a pit stop over to visit Healthberry Farm. It depends on the yeast strain they use. Okay, the yeast I'm using goes to 14%. Now some of my melon mills, that would, turns out that's the term for a mead with fruit in it. Mm -hmm. um, the fruit has wild yeast on the skins that can take it to a higher level. So some of the melon mills are 16%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My meads are about 10. I make very sweet wine, um, all sweetened with honey. Mm -hmm. We're going to start out with true meads. A true mead is made with honey and water and yeast for fermentation. So all the flavor in the mead is from the honey. No other added ingredients. Mead's gonna taste different everywhere you go due to the different flowers the bees made the honey mm. from. And then you get the different recipe, which is all the recipe would be is how much water to honey mm. in a mead. It can be dry or sweet, or, um, depending on the ratio. I'm a beekeeper, honey producer. I have the honey to really give it what it deserves more flavor in a sweet mead. Um, also, the honey is a natural preservative. These age really well. How many? Eight. Eight. Awesome. <laughs> but the name of the mead itself oh, yeah. is from whatever particular flower that these... Honey notes? That's due to weather. For that one, it's rain. Mm. In June, it's been too rainy. It just washes the sugar out of the flower. Wow. So the bees land there, but there's all the sugar's been diluted to where they, there's not enough concentration form to actually make it. Thanks, those are all for mead production. Mm -hmm. It's turned out that mead is by far the biggest seller. This is so cool. Yeah. We should stay outside as well since there's no ventilation in there. Oh, I apologize. I haven't had my second shot yet. Have you guys? We're back to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> But just by taste, it turns out the meat is by far my best seller, thank goodness. Because it's easier to me, for me to make in larger quantities. The fruit is a lot more 
flavor intense. How would you get the, um, I guess you only mentioned really squishy fruits, but if it were like an That's apple, crazy. how would you do that? There's a, uh, we have an old fashioned press and mm. it has two parts on it. And the first is a grinder, grinds them all up into a basket, kind of falls into a basket in, on a tray. And then the tray funnels down with a collection for juice. You push that basket forward when it's full. And then there's a press when there's augers turning and presses down, squeezing the apple pulp. The juice comes out into that tray and is out the spout into whatever you're collecting it in. And so, are you ever? Do you ever just drink? That must be the purest apple juice. Oh, it's separately of me, just it's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, we have a whole party. People come and go with us here and pick the apples, grind it, really? make juice, make enough juice to make a barrel for is the winery. Right? People yeah. take juice home with them. Is there a season that you're the busiest, like fall, or is it typically? Yeah, like the growing season would be the busiest. Okay. Okay. Um, winter, I can really spend a lot of time um, fixing bee equipment and making mead. Very cool. Honey doesn't spoil, so yeah. I can wait until I have time to actually make the batches of mead. Okay. Um, so winter time, I keep busy more inside and pruning fruit trees. But again, the honey is my specialty. Yeah. So if the if the melomels were what I was focused on, I would have more work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's worked out well that the melomels are smaller batches, more specialty, interesting. Yeah. Um, and the mead is my really my base yes. production. Okay. All right, guys, as we wind our way down the trail today, we make our way back to the car to embark on a five and a half hour car ride back to Philadelphia leaving this natural beauty behind us. All I gotta say is I'm really thankful for this weekend. Thankful that you guys got a chance to spend it with us, with our friends. It was really an awesome time. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as, as, much as I did. The people, the places, scenery, the natural beauty of West Virginia has really changed my perception on the state of West Virginia. And I hope it changed yours. So from West Virginia, from the Appalachian Mountains, from the beautiful country views, country roads. Take me home back to Philadelphia. And until next time, don't forget to subscribe, keep traveling, and stay safe.